Hey, Anime Stark fam. Welcome back to the channel. I'm excited to bring you part 2 of What If Deku Was Betrayed, Deku X Momo. Things are about to get even crazier in this alternate twist. Smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss a moment of the action. Without further ado, let's dive into the next chapter of this thrilling scenario. Let's go! Deku woke up hanging, his arm didn't regenerate. Deku, at least I know the limits of my regeneration now. The green-haired guy started crying out of frustration while trying to free himself. Deku, darn it. I'm still weak. At that moment, Nezu entered with the teachers, but they couldn't help but be amazed at what they saw. Deku, you've noticed, right? Endeavor, kid, what happened to you? Deku, Shigaraki. Edge shot, kid, how are you? Deku, honestly, I feel weaker, maybe due to blood loss. Snipe, kid, today's training is cancelled. Deku, no. If I stop today, it'll be a wasted day, and Shigaraki will win. I don't want to be weak anymore. Endeavor, kid, I understand how you feel, but you can't fight like this. Deku, please, I don't want this to limit me. Don't pity me. I'm a hero, and I'll overcome this no matter what. Nezu, I guess we can't persuade you if you put it that way. Okay, I'll make some calls, ending today's training. Snipe, are you sure, director? Edge shot, unbreakable will and a warrior spirit, you're undoubtedly admirable. Okay, I'll help you down. Deku didn't give up, the lack of one arm wouldn't be a limitation. It was challenging, but he knew he wouldn't surrender. Deku, never let them see that they've wounded you. The training was tough, his predator sense was damaged by his arm. It didn't react to all attacks, and his attacks were limited due to the missing arm. The training ended, and he returned to prison. His teachers there showed no mercy, just asking, are you okay? And a nod from the green-haired boy were enough answers. Deku was beaten by the two, but this time, they taught him some one-handed fighting techniques. His sword skills were good, and using only one hand was a bit limiting, but he remained strong. Days passed, and Deku learned many fighting techniques. The missing arm was a bit limiting, but he compensated for it. Being chained by one hand bothered him, but he decided to deceive Shigaraki. The boy adopted a defeated look, and in the eyes of the villain, he succeeded, breaking the green-haired one. His punishments weren't as severe anymore. Internally, Deku smiled. Over time, he blended the fighting styles he was taught. He easily learned a powerful technique from Guru, the combination secret, Dragon Slaying Fist, Rinkei Ogi, Kyoga Ryusatsu Ken, a technique that Guru said required two people but both adapted it for one. With his UA teachers, he learned another technique, using his pyrokinesis to shape fire into a huge dragon. He named it, Taste the Blade of Dragon God. Ryuji no Keno Kurai, Rujin no Ken Wo Kuri. The technique needed a sword to guide it, and although it relied on a quirk he hadn't mastered, he could generate fire on his own and even steal it from others, like Endeavor. Days passed until one morning when the director arrived, but this time, he wasn't alone. An old friend of the freckled one accompanied him, All Might's best friend, David Shield. Deku, Professor Shield. What are you doing here? David, kid, I saw the news, saw what happened to you, and let me tell you, this time I disagreed with Toshi. You saved me, risked your life to save me and Melissa. Kid, you acted like a true hero, and I don't believe you're capable of betrayal. Deku, Professor, I. David, kid, I came here because the director told me about your condition. Kid, there's an option, it's experimental, but it might work. Deku, what do you mean? David, your arm. Deku looked at his missing arm, instinctively touching it. Nezu sighed in relief. Nezu, come with us, son. Everyone left the cell and went somewhere else, again an abandoned place perfect for David Shield to explain his plan, which wasn't very complicated. The scientist had made significant progress in bionic prosthetics after seeing how his daughter created the full gauntlet and how well it served. The experiment made great strides because it was the first to attempt to connect the prosthesis to the body. The professor studied the human body in depth because his goal was no easy task, examining a three-dimensional scheme to see how nerves connected, the brain's function and mobility. David Shield was committed to his task. Deku was fascinated by this and couldn't refuse the opportunity to be the experimental subject. It sounded exciting. Now he trained with some scanners, David didn't want to leave any loose ends in his work. As a precaution and to monitor his movements, they gave him a simple prosthesis. Obviously, Shigaraki didn't like this at all. Every time he saw a new one, he disintegrated it, always claiming that heroes were to blame for his state. 
Shigaraki, I'm serious, kid, think about it. We sent them a video, but they could have consulted you first. Honestly, we didn't think it would work. All Might is the symbol of peace, he would never let anything happen to you. He cares about you like a son, right? Deku didn't answer, the boy decided to stay silent. The words would hurt, but if he wanted his plan to work, he had to stay quiet, let Shigaraki see that he won. Dabi, I think he's gone crazy, or maybe you traumatized him. Toga, Shigaraki, if he's no use anymore. Can I have him? Even dead, he'd serve some purpose, and he has something between his legs that could be useful. Twice, ha ha, but he wouldn't be useful anymore. Well, yes, as food. That's disgusting. Toga, I can stick a pole in and keep him hard just for myself. Don't be stupid. Shigaraki, silence. Let's go. Deku just smiled maliciously, he had noticed a tone of fear or doubt in Shigaraki. The fish had taken the bait. The next few days went better, motivated Deku performed much better. There was good news about his arm too. His training bore fruit, now he could hold his own against Guru and Stain without using one for all. His predator sense was sharper, healing factor faster, and he could endure pain without a problem. With his UA teachers, Deku kept Endeavor at bay even with minimal use of one for all. His black whip's control was perfect, he even accessed a second phase where they looked like tentacles made of tar. The first time Deku used this, it shocked his teachers. The boy let himself be hit until they left him on the ground, then the mass started surrounding his back. Everyone was surprised, what was that thing? Deku, and to think they forced me to use this. Endeavor, kid, what is? Deku, it's something I like to call vengeance. The green-haired boy stood up, completely covered in blood, but no visible wounds. Suddenly, the mass began forming into tentacles that rose a bit. Deku, smirking wickedly well. Let's get started, or will you just stand there? The boy's gaze became dark and sharp, reminding everyone of the Deku they saw in the videos. Endeavor charged with force, and so did Deku. The green-haired boy launched one of his tentacles, which Endeavor easily dodged. However, this distraction gave Deku the opportunity to deliver a strong kick. Endeavor unleashed a fire attack, which Deku stopped with one hand. Closing his fist made the fire disappear. Endeavor gritted his teeth and charged at the freckled one again. Snipe fired without stopping, and Edge shot threw himself at the boy using his ninja technique. Deku predicted the shots with his predator sense, dodging them while Edge shot approached at high speed. The ninja's plan was to churn the green-haired one's intestines to put him to sleep, but a wall created by the black liquid surprised him, forcing him to unfold his head, which was then hit by Deku and thrown to the ground. With a jump, the freckled one approached Snipe, took his gun, and started shooting at his teacher, who also shot back but moved. Deku then smiled and stopped shooting. Deku, smirking gotcha. The three professionals saw they were together, understanding it was the freckled one's plan. They tried to separate, but Deku used his black whips to keep them together. Deku, it's useless, this is your fate, your defeat. The green-haired one raised his hand, and something surprised them all. A huge fireball formed in his palm, growing larger. Everyone thought the freckled one had reached his limit, but the sphere became even more immense, bewildering everyone. Deku, looks good, right? Thanks, Endeavor Sensei, without you, this attack wouldn't have been possible. Endeavor, that's my. Deku, exactly, I made your attack disappear, but I added it back to my fire. Now it's your defeat. The sphere wasn't that large, but it burned intensely, and the heat it emitted was suffocating. Nezu thought that being among villains had shaped the freckled one this way. But suddenly, this sphere disappeared, and Deku knelt down. His whole body began to emit steam, the boy was exhausted, taking deep breaths, his vision returned to normal. Deku, still. Still has. A lot of room for improvement. Endeavor, what was that? Deku, a new technique, using my whips and pyrokinesis, but it's still very new and unstable. Also, if I had touched the whips, it would have hurt me. Snipe, does it have a name? Deku, not yet, open to suggestions. Edge shot, it's a dangerous technique, I see. Deku, if it gets out of control, it could kill me, it needs a lot of concentration. Even if I had let it drop just now, I would have lost the ability to use my quirk for a while due to the excess force it uses. Nezu, so you only tested it now, wanted to see how much power you could use. Deku, yes. But I still have to practice it. Endeavor, and that mud that came out of your body? Deku, these are my black whips, I access this form where I can use them however I want. 
I can wrap my fists to deliver a stronger punch or create a wall. The only downside is that if I cover my hands or legs, I become a bit slow because I'm adding weight. Nezu, you're amazing, kid. Deku, edge shot sensei, thanks for teaching me meditation techniques, they helped a lot. Edge shot, a ninja doesn't just excel in strength, staying silent and cautious is key to success in combat. Snipe, I see you've improved your aim a lot. Deku, yeah, in my cell, I can practice this in the darkness with stones. Edge shot, the heart of a warrior, a true ninja, a great hero. Deku, speaking of that. Director Nezu, is there any way I could change my hero name? Nezu, despite your crimes, you're still a minor, and as an orphan, your documentation stays with UA until you come of age and can stand on your own. In short, yes, you can. Edge shot, what are you thinking, kid? Deku, they locked up Deku, he stayed, died, and rotted in prison. I want to leave that name behind, no more useless disguised as you can do it. Snipe, a new name? Kid, it's not certain you'll get out. Deku, I'm innocent, Snipe Sensei, someday it will be proven. Endeavor, you have my attention, kid. What name will you use? Deku, they kicked me out of UA for something I didn't do, turned their backs on me, and sent me to hell. I have no family, no clan. Basically, I'm a stray, a edge shot, a ronin. Deku, how about that? Endeavor, the lone wolf, the hero ronin, sounds good. Snipe, I understand you wanted to be number one, right? Deku, this is like a cake, if you want to do things right, you have to break a few eggs. Endeavor, doing what's right. Deku, to do what's right, we might have to break some rules. Number one is too public, and I hate that. I prefer to stay away. Nezu, despite having one for all? Deku, not all holders were number one, were they? Nezu, all right. Ronin, I'll take care of that. Time to go back to prison. Deku, never let them see that they've wounded you. The boy returned to prison where his teachers took him to train once again. But this time, upon arrival, his predator sense activated immediately at full power. Using his great agility, the boy effortlessly dodged a tackle from a blonde he never wanted to see again. Deku, what are you doing here? You were locked up. Muscular, same as you, and look at you. The green-haired one growled and launched an attack. Muscular, using his quirk, engaged in a long battle. Deku used his quirk to move and deliver some small attacks. His healing factor and predator sense gave him a great advantage, but he knew he couldn't extend the fight for too long. Muscular, stop thinking. Delivering a powerful blow. The freckled one was thrown several meters back, crashing into a wall. Muscular, that makes you slow, makes you weak. Deku, you don't know anything about it, you darn killer. Muscular, wanna win? Trust that you will win, fight using your strength without holding back, hit as if you wanna kill your opponent, even if you unleash a barrage of blows starting to hit him each blow must be aimed to kill the other. Deku, I won't kill. Hitting with force. Muscular, you're a hero, right? Sometimes you'll have to get your hands dirty with blood, don't think about others, think about yourself. Kill or be killed, that's what life boils down to, survival of the fittest. Deku, you know nothing. Muscular, I chose to turn my back on society, they turned their backs on you, didn't they? Deku, shut up. Muscular, everyone did, even your mother died, All Might turned his back on you, and your girlfriend was fooling around with someone else while you dreamed of doing the right thing like a simple boy scout. Deku, I said. Shut up. The green haired loaded 100% of one for all and launched himself to mercilessly hit Muscular, but before he could kill him, someone hit him. Guru, Dog Guardian's movements. Deku, adopting a fighting stance secret combination, Dragon Slayer's Cross Fang Fist. Rinke Ogi, Kyoga Ryusatsu Ken, breathing peacefully abandonment, Michiri, Makiri, whispering one for all 100%. At that moment, Guru regretted teaching him those two techniques, the green haired was attacking at an impressive speed, the human monster was being brutally beaten. Stain joined the battle, and although for a moment he could keep him at bay, it was only a matter of time before Deku used his adaptability to turn everything back in his favor. Muscular re-entered the battle. Guru, what the hell did you tell him to make him like this? Muscular, that doesn't matter now. Stain, he's right, Hunter, we have to stop him. Deku, why is he here? Guru, now you want to talk? Stain, Guru released him. The freckled one stopped his attack, due to the excessive force, he fell to his knees. 
Muscular was about to hit him, but Guru got in his way. Deku, why did you do that? That beast almost killed me. Muscular, don't tempt me to do it, kid. Guru, I already told you what will happen if you do it. Now, answering your question, Izuku, I have to tell you that I did it because I thought it would help you. He's an animal in a human body, he moves solely by instinct, just wants to fulfill his goal, but he has something you lack, brutality and attack. You think through each of your moves, he doesn't care. Deku, if I attack recklessly, I'll become a danger, and they'll really want to lock me up. Guru, yes, but that doesn't mean you have to be like him by force. Just fight, adapt brutality to your fighting style. We told you, kid, show no mercy to your opponents, they won't show it to you or the people. Muscular, believe me, I dislike this as much as you do, but I hope you learn something stupid. At least now you can give me a fight. Deku, give you a fight? If I wanted to, you'd already be dead. Guru, that's what I mean. You can learn something from this brute, kid. Deku, alright, do we have a deal, muscular? Muscular, one day, they won't be there. Deku, and if you speak like that again, I'll make sure nobody finds your body. Stain, alright, now that everything is settled, how about we continue with the training? Guru, hold on a moment, Stain. Kid, I'm surprised you used abandonment. Mixing it with the secret combination is brutal, although there are other techniques where it would fit better. Deku, I know, I'm working on some. Guru, although I remind you that using that technique consumes a lot of energy. Deku, I know, but you know it gives me many advantages. Guru, damn, sometimes I wish I hadn't taught you any of that. By the way, how's the prosthetic? Deku, it serves its purpose for now. Guru, yeah. I don't believe that. You just shattered it with that combination. Luckily, it was you and not Shigaraki. Although I have to ask, why did you do it? Deku, luckily, I have a crazy killer on my side looking at muscular. Stain, I see you've recovered, grab your sword. Deku, that's a broomstick. Stain, someday, kid. For now, it's good to know you learn quickly. Super learning ability, also known as super adaptability, a technique that could also be considered an art. This technique is Deku's, and he's had it for a long time. It helped him with hero analysis and was especially useful during his time at UA using it. He could make great plans and defeat objectives when working in a team. Now in prison, he improved it. With this, he quickly learned various fighting styles taught during his time, surprising Stain. Also, he developed advanced marksmanship through training with Snipe. Days passed, and now Deku was training a bit with Muscular. The villain didn't want to admit it, but the green-haired had become dangerous, too dangerous. His fighting style was nothing like what he faced the first time. Even the villain thought that in a one-on-one, -on -one, he might even manage to kill him. On Shigaraki's side, he grinned maliciously. He achieved his goal and informed his mentor, all for one. All for one, tell me, Tomura Shigaraki, how is your plan going? Shigaraki, sensei, I finally did it. No one is incorruptible. All for one, are you sure? Shigaraki, I destroyed him psychologically and physically. I killed his mother, framed him for something he didn't do, tortured him, and ripped off his arm. Sensei, he's ready. All for one just smiled macabrely. All for one, who would have thought, even the purest of heart can fall into darkness if given the right push. All right, Tomura Shigaraki, proceed with the next phases of the plan. I will finally snatch something from All Might's heart. Now, he will bear his sins. Ha ha ha. On the green-haired side, he didn't stop his training. The boy changed prosthetics many times, but that's how they managed to make several improvements in what would be the definitive one. He also learned a lot from the meditation techniques Edshot taught him. Deku learned to control pain, his healing factor was painful, but if he could control the pain, he could fight without restrictions. The boy became a battle ace now. His training achieved a goal, turning the freckled one into a weapon, a great fighter, a relentless martial artist. The boy managed to blend everything he was taught, adapted fighting styles, modified them. His quirk became powerful, one for all was enriched with his abilities to a level he never imagined, as well as his knowledge. He couldn't be just a mass of muscles and quirk without a brain, in the words of Director Nezu, knowledge is also a weapon, it changes the outcome of a battle if used correctly. So, he spent a year and a few more months. But now, let's focus on UA, that prestigious school whose students had moved on to the second year. It was now considered the safest. The news of the freckled one's arrest continued to make headlines. For the local media, 
the investigation had finally concluded, and the arrest appeared heroic on camera. None of the students were affected by what happened to Deku. Classes A and B still thought that arresting Izuku was the best. Some regretted knowing him. Ibura Shiyazaki blamed herself for thinking the boy was a pure soul. Except for Todoroki and Shinso, everyone hated the boy. But someone didn't know how to feel, Momo Yaoyorozu. She was confused. She remembered how, during the USJ accident, the green-haired tried to help everyone, even when injured, he saved all might. She also recalled what happened during the camp, those words he said throughout the time she knew him would never leave her mind. I want to help them. I will save everyone. I won't just stand there watching as everyone is in danger. She had seen Freckles' fighting spirit on multiple occasions, even considering it a motivation along with Ida and Todoroki during the provisional license exam. She witnessed his strength multiple times, but she had also seen the videos, and the evidence was clear. There was no other way, he was the traitor. Was he the traitor? She had seen how Uraka and he had become a couple after rescuing that girl Eri. She herself heard from the brunette how Deku had defeated Chisaki to prevent him from taking the white-haired girl. In those moments, she saw Uraka so excited, so in love. When she found out that she was deceiving her with the blue-haired guy Momo didn't know how to react. What could she say? And after seeing the supposed evidence. A character who was poetic justice, but within her, there was a struggle. She didn't know who was right. Jiro, hey, girl, are you okay? Yaoyorozu, what? Ah. Uh. Yes. Of course, he he. Jiro, it's funny, I guess you never know who to trust. Yaoyorozu, what do you mean? Jiro, well, I mean, I'm talking about Midoriya. We always saw him so nervous and scared that we never thought he could do all that. Yaoyorozu, and? Have you thought about the possibility that he didn't do it? Jiro, what? Yaoyorozu, well, you know, I. Jiro, are you defending him, girl? Yaoyorozu, no. It's. It's just that, well, you know, he always risked everything for everyone. I don't think that can be fake so well. Jiro, Yamomo, yeah, you're really adorable sometimes. He deceived us, the videos are there, we all saw them. Now I feel bad for Uraka, she was the girlfriend of a traitor all this time. Yaoyorozu, yeah. Um, I'll go to the bathroom. Jiro, are you okay, girl? Do you want me to come with you? Yaoyorozu, no, thanks, I won't be long. The raven-haired girl went to the bathroom but couldn't stop thinking about Freckles. Part of her believed he was the traitor, but another part believed he was a true hero. Back in Tartarus, Deku's training was coming to an end. The boy managed to integrate the fighting styles he had been taught, adapting Muscular's brutality to his fighting style while retaining his analytical thinking. He was taken to a laboratory Professor Shield had specifically built for that day. The operation took a long time, a mistake could cost everything. Melissa was present, helping her father, along with their teachers and director Nezu. They monitored Izuku's vital signs as he lay on the bed, asleep, surrounded by cables, screws, and spare parts. In the end, they succeeded. David, how do you feel? Deku, honestly, I slept badly. You get used to sleeping on the floor and hanging, so being in something so soft is uncomfortable. Nezu, it's the pillow too. Deku, excuse me? Nezu, I used to sleep on the floor, tortured, with rocks as a pillow, like a caveman from your history books. When I finally escaped and could sleep on a soft bed. Deku, it's like a marshmallow, I feel like I'll sink to the floor. The director gave him a smile that Deku returned. David, and how do you feel, kid? Freckles looked at his new arm, saying goodbye to the old prosthetics. This one was definitive, completely metallic gray, with pads on the palm and fingers. He saw no cables or anything resembling them. The arm was divided into sections, and at each junction, there was a faint green light. Deku, it's very eye-catching. David, well, yes. Deku, never let them see that they managed to hurt you. Professor, is there any way to hide it? I don't want to attract too much attention. David, let's run a few tests first. I have what you're looking for. Deku, all right. And so, they began some tests like ball throwing. They told the green-haired guy that his arm had more strength. The process to connect it with the rest was painful, as they had to cut more of the arm, almost reaching the chest. Taking advantage of his healing factor, they wouldn't have to let it fully recover, although they had to work quickly to prevent the wound from closing too soon. This way, they could connect the cables to the nerves. It was somewhat unlikely that he could use one for all in both arms, but they weren't sure. It was better not to find out, 
as failure would only destroy his new arm. They conducted mobility tests, comfort tests, and others. Deku, this doesn't turn into a cannon, right? David, ha ha ha, no, although if you want. Deku, ha ha ha, it was a joke, professor, though it would have been cool to say booyah. David, I also have to tell you, kid, that since we don't know if your arm can handle one for all, we added a metal that makes it stronger. It's very difficult to destroy, and its punches are very powerful. You have to learn to control your strength as much as possible. Deku, understood. Melissa, and now, what you asked for. This is a paint capable of covering everything. It was invented for people who wanted to hide their prosthetics, just like you. It's water resistant, looks very good with your skin color, and you can swim with it, although tanning is another matter. Deku, very funny. Melissa, although it's not perfect, strong blows can hurt it, and exposure to fire can damage it, showing burns and such. Deku, fire bad. But I don't know if they told you, my quirk is fire. Melissa, then pray you can't use it on that hand. The green-haired guy was taken back to prison, where he was greeted by his teachers, who were surprised by the sturdy arm the boy now had. Guru, what's this? Deku, a scolding. They didn't like that I always had to change, it seems they got fed up. Guru, at least you won't be asking for a hand for everything now. Deku, ha ha, great joke. Guru, listen, kid, in this world, you'll always be alone. It's kill or be killed, hero or villain, both destined to kill each other. Deku, thanks for the advice. If you can call it that. Staying, listen to him, kid. You're good at fighting like a hero, but remember, you have combat skills taught by villains. Let's say you're something new. Deku, astray, that's what I am. Guru, you're like me. Deku, you were expelled, and I. Guru, you had the same thing done to you, idiot. Deku, there's a difference. You're a hunter, mine was a mistake. Guru, and what would you prefer to be? The sweet and weak kid who didn't know how to use his power? The idiot whose girlfriend cheated on him without him knowing, or what you are now? An expert fighter who can give all three of us a tough battle? Deku, you turned me into a weapon. Guru, and that's what you were supposed to be. You have an incredible quirk, and you didn't know how to use it. We made you better. Deku remained silent, the white-haired guy was right. They made him better than he was before. He was no longer a crybaby, no longer nervous. He had left all that behind. Deku, I just want to be left alone. Guru, peace is something you'll never have, kid or at least they took away that option from you. Listen well, Izuku, they sent you to the worst prison in the world. A damn villain controlled them with false evidence to make them do this. They turned their backs on you. Deku, and what did you do? Guru, we kept you alive. We gave you the weapons you needed to defend yourself. We trained you so that you would never be a mockery again. And listen to this, we never liked you. We never grew fond of you. This isn't a nice, love-filled story. You only earned our respect, and that's it. Now, when you get out of here, I don't care how long it takes. I don't give a damn if it's in 20 years or a week. When you get out of here, because I know you will, you better not make a fool of yourself because you're no longer a stupid kid. The white-haired guy left the cell quite upset. Muscular also went to his cell without saying anything. Stain, on the other hand, watched the green-haired guy who was chaining himself once again. Stain, I didn't know he could get like that. Deku, I don't care. Stain, kid, I know you adopted that attitude to keep everyone away from you, but with us, it won't work. Among monsters, we understand each other. Each of us has our own demons. Deku, you carry yours with ease. Stain, because I learned to do it. You should too. The day you do, you'll appreciate this new opportunity. Deku, whatever. Stain, Saya guess it's not worth arguing with you now. Listen well, Izuku, mentally note this address, and I want you to remember it. On the street forex, you'll find an abandoned house. Look, and you'll know where to find it. Deku, find what? Staying, a gift. I don't know when you'll get out, but you better not forget the address. The man also left, and Deku was left alone. He didn't want to chain himself like an animal, but he knew it was necessary. The boy waited for Shigaraki to show up, but he never did. Deku didn't close his eyes all night, although the small leak in his head, as always, helped him stay awake. The boy remained alert to anything. Back at UA we can see Mirio running toward UA, followed by Nehire and Tamaki. Nehire, wait, Mirio. Mirio, I can't wait, I have the answer. Sighs, 
Answer to what? Mirio, Midoriya didn't do it, and I know how to prove it. Nay higher, how? Mirio, wait, and you'll see. The boy went to the principal's office where Endeavor was with the rodent watching the video, finding evidence. Endeavor, there has to be something that helps me. Nezu, do you think it's possible? Endeavor, he didn't do it. Mirio, entering abruptly he's right. Nezu, young Mirio, what are you doing here? Mirio, I know how to prove it. I know how to prove Midoriya's innocence. Endeavor, kid, I've been trying to do that for over a year. What do you think you can do? Mirio, at the most basic level, we never realized. Nezu, explain. I'll call the other teachers, everyone needs to see this. The rodent pressed a button, and all the teachers were alerted, within minutes, everyone was gathered. All Might, what's the emergency? Young Mirio, what are you doing here? Nay higher, we're here too. Midnight, what's so important that it requires the presence of the big three and a pro hero? Mirio, I have the evidence. Midoriya never betrayed us. Cementos, kid, I don't understand. We all saw how that traitor deceived us all. Ectoplasm, I know you think you're doing the right thing, but don't fool yourselves. Mirio, none of that. He didn't do it. All Might, young Mirio, you're a smart young man. Don't ruin that by defending a villain. Mirio, I defend what is just, what is right. That's why I aspire to be a hero. You're mistaken, All Might. All Might, I accept that you didn't want one for all, but this is. Endeavor, let him speak, All Might. He has the right. Midnight, but he. Nezu, this is my academy, and you will follow the rules. Everyone, please be silent. Now, please continue, young one. Mirio, thank you. As I was saying, he didn't betray us. He would be incapable of it. Yes, I know the evidence is strong, but I'll also tell you where we went wrong. It was in not believing, in being so absorbed in having the evidence that we didn't think if it was real. All Might, what do you mean? Mirio, the video starts showing what happened just before the USJ, right? Well, that was a traumatic event, but director, did you talk to Midoriya before the accident? Nezu, never. Mirio, was he in the office, or did you see him using your computer? Nezu, no. All Might, it's just one piece of evidence, it can't answer everything. Mirio, darn it, Aizawa isn't here. Well, tell me, did the student Ochako Uraka have any reports of being out late on the day of the video? Nezu, not that I remember, Aizawa never mentioned anything. All Might, neither did I. Mirio, you focused on your evidence and didn't see what was happening around. Also, Midoriya's height. Tsukuchi, entering the office from what I understand, and sorry for interrupting, Midoriya is taller than Toga by a few centimeters. Mirio, and in the video, they look the same size. All Might, he didn't do it. Mirio, no. Now do you see? You accused an innocent person. Midnight, that doesn't explain why he ran. Cementos, and why he left the academy grounds. Mirio, have you not wondered why no one reported his disappearance at that hour? Endeavor, that's a good question. Mirio, his classmates were having a room king contest. He was there at that time. And if you don't believe me, then believe Todoroki. He's the one who gave me that information. They got in, bypassed the security system, and managed to do that. Endeavor, besides, he didn't run away. He was going home before you tried to kill him. Cementos, he said he had proof of his innocence. All Might, that proves nothing. Mirio, it proves that he was innocent, that you judged and imprisoned him on a belief. This is a video that the villain sent. The blonde approached All Might, who looked at him with some doubt, but before he could do anything, a portal formed in the room, and applause could be heard. Shigaraki, coming out of the portal well, well, you took longer than I thought, heroes. All Might, Tomura Shigaraki getting ready to fight. Shigaraki, symbol of peace. If I were you, I wouldn't move. All Might, why would I listen to a rat like you? Shigaraki, because I want to believe that you care about your students. At that moment, the screens in the principal's office that showed images from the entire UA displayed scenes of the school being attacked by Nomus and some members of the League. Shigaraki, you don't know how easy it is to sow chaos in a school like this. Cementos, damned. Shigaraki, ha ha ha, wait, wait, something's missing, or rather, someone. The guest of honor, Kurogiri, please. Then, in the main courtyard where students from classes A and B gathered to fight, 
a figure appeared, one that everyone recognized. Deku was in the fight now, wearing a stylish black and red outfit, wielding a knife like Toga, and his gaze was evil, sharp, and mocking. Immediately, everyone focused their attention on him. Baku go, damned. What the hell are you doing here? Deku, what am I doing here? Well, even the question is offensive. I came to finish what I started. Smiling like a madman, Deku brandished his knife, but it didn't stop there. In the bright Nezu's office, an exactly identical Deku appeared. All Might, young Midoriya. Deku, oh, so you remember me. Endeavor, Tsukuchi. Tsukuchi, he's locked up, he hasn't left his cell at all. This. This can't be. Deku, but I can, detective. Am I not here? Nezu, kid, but. Deku, ha ha ha, you should see your faces. They're just great. I feel like killing all of you right here and now. Shigaraki, no, kid, they still serve us. Endeavor, looking at Deku's arm kid, he ripped off your arm, and you defend him? Deku, what? But my arm is right here raising his arm. Endeavor only needed that. Without wasting time, he shot a fireball at the boy, destroying his arm. Immediately, the green-haired one turned into black mud. All Might, what the hell? Shigaraki, I gotta bring the original, I suppose. The green-haired guy in the yard immediately entered the portal and appeared in the room. But before he could say anything, he got hit by a wave courtesy of Nehire, again the same result. Mirio, clones. I knew it. You never had Midoriya on your side. Shigaraki, ha ha ha, no, we could never. He's too upright, though it was a good idea, right? Framed him, you believed it, arrest him, and I'm free to do whatever I want. All Might, you scoundrel. Shigaraki, wait, are you calling me a scoundrel? I'm the one who locked him in the deepest cell in Tartarus, right? Or not? Mirio, you made the worst mistake coming here. Shigaraki, I don't think so. I can leave as soon as I can. It's easy, especially when you have a computer expert like Bravo on your side. After that, it was simple. Make it bypass security, have twice create a few clones, replicate this office, and voila. They're so foolish and gullible, they didn't even bother checking the dates, ha ha ha. Each laugh was a blow to the teachers, especially All Might, who felt he had betrayed someone he considered a son. All Might, Shigaraki. Transforming into his muscular form. Shigaraki, ha ha, come on, All Might, don't make me laugh. You're really going to lecture me? Of all people here, you feel entitled to that? You betrayed that fool, turned your back on him, took away his quirk, locked him in the worst hole in the world, and on top of that, deceived his mother with a heroine. And you still want to act like this? You're truly incredible. Midnight, you'll pay for what you did to our Izuku. Ripping her costume. Shigaraki, our? Wait. Did you really say ours? Remember, you're not his mother. His real mother is buried in a grave that not even the symbol of peace visits. His real mother is the woman he was with before you confessed to him. Midnight stood still while the villain just laughed. Shigaraki, which reminds me, you should even thank me. All Might, you damn. Shigaraki, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't be together. Midnight, what do you mean? Shigaraki, you can go now. At that moment, an exact copy of Midnight created by Kurogiri's portal appeared. Everyone was impressed, especially All Might, who couldn't believe it. The blonde looked at the woman next to him. Midnight, Toshi, it's me. Midnight 2, Toshi, don't listen to her. I'm the real one, she's the imposter. Midnight, it's not true. I'm Nemuri Kayama, the professional hero, and plus 18 Midnight. Toshi Nori, trust me. You know me. Midnight 2, you know me too. You know who I am, ha ha ha. At that moment, the midnight from the portal, besides laughing like crazy, started to melt, changed her stature, and then they saw the features. It was Himiko Toga. Mirio, but how? Toga, you're not aware? Well, there was a battle some time ago. They thought they had caught me, how naive. It was just a matter of changing shape a bit, and that's it. But in my battle, I faced midnight, and guess what? Nezu, you stole her blood. Shigaraki, you don't know how fun it was to play with the heart of the symbol of peace. Cementos, bastard. Toga, oh Toshi, I've always been in love with you. You're my hero and my reason to keep going. I love you so much, my symbol of peace. Ha ha ha, it was so much fun, 
although if I have to admit something, the sex with you is intense. Seriously, I couldn't walk well after such an intense and rough session. The blonde opened his eyes in shock, then felt anger. He let go of Midnight's hand and prepared to strike his enemy with everything, but Shigaraki just raised his hand. Shigaraki, if I were you, I wouldn't move. In fact, I wouldn't even think about activating your quirks, or else I'll be forced to release all the gnomus I have against your beloved students. All Might, you won't get away with this. Shigaraki, shut up, will you? All Might, and if I don't? Shigaraki, I wonder what the press will think of the news, All Might has sexual relations with the villain Toga, who is also a minor. Besides, you should be grateful because if it weren't for me taking care of Midoriya's mother, you wouldn't be together. All Might halted his attack, and Shigaraki looked amused. Shigaraki, good dog. Ha ha ha. Endeavor, I don't care how long it takes, we will end you. Shigaraki, I'd like to see that, heroes. But before that, let me give you a little gift, 100% authentic. I give you my word of honor. At that moment, the villain left, and a video played on the office screens, recorded in Tartarus prison. They could see Deku bound in chains, cuts in various parts of his body, some burns, and marks from Shigaraki's disintegration. The entire league was with him, but what surprised them was that Deku was laughing. Shigaraki, Midoriya. Tell me, what's so funny? Deku, Villain League, now that I think about it, it's a dumb name. You all seem very relaxed for being locked up like me. Shigaraki, you think we're locked up? No, the only one is you. Kurogiri is here, he's our door in and out. Deku, you risked your comrade just for this? Shigaraki, it's a very small price. Besides, with you here, we can finally overthrow UA. Deku, you planted false evidence, turned everyone against me, and killed my mother. It seems like your attack was more directed at me. Shigaraki, minor details. Now tell me, hero, the plans of UA, alarms, schedules of teachers, everything you know. Deku, why do you want to know? Don't you already have everything planned? Shigaraki, we already have everything we want, but we thought if there's anything you'd like to tell us. Deku, there's something. Name, Izuku Midoriya. Rank, UA student and aspiring hero. Serial number, 54,985,870. And that's all you'll hear from my lips. The recording ended, and everyone was surprised. Regardless of what happened, he didn't turn his back on them, even when locked up. Nezu, alright, if that's how he wants to play it. Tsukuchi, you know what to do. Tsukuchi, director. Nezu, go to Tartarus, tell them that Nezu, the director of UA Hero Academy, approves the release of the prisoner Izuku Midoriya and that all charges against him are dropped. All Might, he can't do that. Nezu, of course, he can. He's a student of this institution. When he became an orphan, his documents remained in the school until his position was decided. Now that his innocence and integrity have been proven, the crimes against the hero society that were attributed to him are null and void. All Might, but, Director, with all due respect, the kid has spent just over a year and a half. Do you think someone in his condition can integrate into society? Nezu, if that video is true, then I have no reason to doubt him. Tsukuchi, give that order now. I'll go pick him up myself. Endeavor, All Might, come with me. Endeavor, yes. Nezu, Midnight, you too. All Might, but why her? Nezu, if anything goes out of control because of our presence, especially yours, it's better to have her nearby. Her quirk can put him to sleep. Mind you, I said put to sleep and not kill, as it's her specialty. All Might, what time do we leave? Nezu, looking at the cameras, now. The rodent watched everything, hoping that the clone boy and the gnomus had already left, and seeing that they had, he joined everyone and left. The other pro heroes just watched him go. The three great heroes, on the other hand, had a small smile, even Tamaki. Mirio, just wait, Izuku. They're coming for you. Back in Tartarus prison, its interior had an obvious lack of light, the lamps flickering in a terrifying manner, resembling a horror scene. On the last floor, all cells were in darkness, some illuminated by a few weak lights that barely showed the bars. In Deku's cell, he could be seen chained to the wall, hanging with his arms extended upward, his head drooping. He looked like an ancient doll with torn and burned remnants that used to be clothes. It didn't seem like he was breathing, the little light in the place and his position made him look like a corpse. For the first time in the year and so many days he had been in Tartarus, he could sleep. 
It hadn't been pleasant, but it had been a while after all. However, this was soon ruined because footsteps and the sound of heels approached, making Deku sigh quite annoyed. Shigaraki hadn't come to bother him, and his teachers hadn't come either. The boy was figuring out who was coming to interrupt his pleasant sleep, but. Guard, hey, D, you've got visitors, shorty. Up we go, it's not time to sleep. Hitting his cell forcefully. Then the chains moved, and slowly his body began to move calmly despite the considerable noise. His long green hair swayed from side to side, releasing a few drops of water. His emerald green eyes opened, adjusting to the lack of light, then opened a bit surprised because he definitely didn't expect this surprise. A somewhat mocking smile formed on Izuku's mouth. Deku, oh! They've finally come. Izuku Midoriya had awakened, the boy who once was willing to give his life for others and was now chained like an animal. Nezu, hello again, young Midoriya. All Might looked at his former disciple with a touch of regret, sadness, and pity, but he didn't know that the one hanging there was no longer Deku, no, not anymore. Deku died a long time ago, and although All Might didn't know it, he and the others were the ones who took care of killing him. Now, the one in front was someone else, and soon they would regret turning their backs when in the past they could have helped him. The one hanging there wasn't the kind and smiling boy he knew a long time ago, and soon he would realize it. Everyone would realize it. Izuku would make sure to point it out to them. All Might, Young Midoriya. Deku, hello, All Might. All Might, Young Midoriya. Izuku simply smirked as he looked at everyone thanks to the light provided by Endeavor. The boy stretched his body a bit, making his chains rattle, giving midnight chills. The green-haired guy cracked his neck. Deku, sorry for the mess, but as you can see spreading his arms I don't have many chances to clean up, ha ha ha. All Might, Kid. Deku, Director Nezu, what brings you here? Tsukuchi, Izuku Midoriya, you are being released from Tartarus Maximum Security Prison as flaws were found in the evidence against you. You'll be allowed to leave legally and justified. Also, an apology is in order, and... Nezu, and you'll be allowed to re-enter UA Hero Academy, where you can once again share your dormitory. Deku, and if I say no? Nezu, kid, you claimed you were innocent, and you are. That's why we're setting you free. Deku, so, lies will be believed, and I'll end up here again? Thanks, but I've gotten used to looking like a chained martyr. It's good for circulation, and the food isn't bad either. It's cat food, but if Simba could grow healthy with bugs, then so can I. Director Nezu knew he was just teasing, as did Endeavor. All Might, Director Nezu, I told you this was a bad idea. He spent too much time with villains. If he wasn't a threat before, he is now. Deku, huh? Did I hear correctly? Are you calling me a threat, All Might? I just wanted to prove my innocence, and you simply hit me and left me to my fate here like a rabid dog. All Might, transforming into his muscular form don't force me to do it. Deku, ha ha. So, you've given up one for all. All Might, what? How do you know? Deku, how do I know? Easy. If you still had all the power, there would be no need to enter Tartarus Week. You would enter as All Might, showing your full power, impacting and frightening everyone. I assume you did it to save energy and not exhaust your embers. All Might, very clever. Deku, just like I know Endeavor came as backup strength in case I got violent, and Midnight came to put me to sleep. Midnight, how? Deku, know your enemies, and you'll win the fight. Midnight, we're not your enemies, son. Deku, never say that word again, you're not worthy. All Might, he's no longer Izuku, director. Understand what has happened here in a year. Deku, almost a year and a half, but who's counting, right? All Might, besides, he has no quirk. Why would we take him back? Deku then exerted force on his arms and began pulling his chains. They tightened and started to make noise. All Might, young Midoriya, stop. These are steel chains, it's impossible to break. But the freckled guy didn't listen. He kept exerting force, feeling something coming out of him, his characteristic rays. Deku, in a low voice no, I'll break this without using you, I'll save the surprise. The green-haired guy continued to use all his strength. All might, stop. But finally, it happened, the chains gave in, broke, and the freckled guy fell to the ground. The blonde couldn't believe it, and then Deku stood up. Deku, ah. It feels so good to stretch my legs. Midnight, how? Deku, breaking a shackle with relative ease maybe they were rusty, there's a leak above me. Though what was really interesting was the fascinating conversation we were having. 
is there an option to come back? All Might, kid, you don't have a quirk, without one. Deku, I'd just be a hindrance. I've heard that before, so how about? Midnight, the director won't really speak seriously, it's been a long time here. Nezu, the choice is his, if he decides to return, it's his right. Deku, fantastic. I've really missed UA I have big plans. Nezu, alright, it's decided, let's go now. Endeavor walked slowly, followed by Deku, Director Nezu. Behind were Midnight and All Might, who hesitated to accept the boy back into the academy. But as they passed by Guru's prison, the boy felt guilty about what happened with his mentor. So, he approached carefully, but All Might took him and handcuffed him, pulling him away. Deku, Guru. Guru, listen to me, kid. You better fulfill what I told you, or I'll kill you myself. Understood? Deku, Guru. All Might, come, Midoriya. Deku, let me go, damn it. Endeavor, come, I'll take him. The flame hero approached and took the boy by the chain of the handcuffs, pulling him. The boy struggled, but he saw his mentor smiling. Guru, in a low voice good luck, Izuku. The director got into his vehicle ready to drive. The director's car was specially made for him, and there was a car behind for Deku. The car had an autopilot. Deku was seated in the front with Endeavor, and Midnight and All Might went behind, still pondering what had happened. But then, after a significant part of the journey, noises, screams, and blows started to be heard in the front where Izuku was. Endeavor, stay still. Deku, make me, flame guy. There were some hits, and then nothing. All Might remained still in his muscular form, and the rest of the journey went on like that. Finally, they arrived at UA, where everyone got off. But the surprise was Deku, who now had shackles on his feet and a muzzle preventing him from speaking. The boy also had blood on his forehead. All Might, Endeavor, what happened? Endeavor, he tried to escape, I just asserted my hero's right. Now move fast, brat. Pushing Izuku. Deku fell to the ground, but Endeavor lifted him abruptly. With this action, he earned a hateful look from Izuku, who walked on. All Might, weren't you supposed to believe in his innocence? Endeavor, I do. The brat earned it, though it's curious, isn't it? All Might, what? Endeavor, I was hated by my children, and now I've reconciled with them and my wife. All Might, what's curious about that? Endeavor, I was bad before, but I still didn't turn my back on the kid, even though I didn't know him. And you, who were almost like a father to him, did. That's curious, or maybe ironic, I don't know. The flame hero moved on with the freckled boy, leaving All Might in thought. Endeavor, Director Nezu, what will happen to him? From what I know, you've already filled the gap the boy left with. Nezu, I informed Aizawa that a new student would arrive. I didn't tell him who because I didn't want complaints. Deku, Dijmanakar Kuni, Muena Mitaritvo translation, let me handle it, sounds fun. The green-haired guy had the muzzle, so nothing he said was understood, although Nezu could recognize the boy's look, the same one he had when seeking revenge or when giving an exam like the one he gave to Mina and Kaminari. Nezu, do you want us to leave it to you? Deku, nodding. Nezu, all right, just don't be too rough, kid. Endeavor, do you want to scare them? Deku, nodding again. Endeavor, okay. Class A room. Hero analysis, a class supposed to be taught by All Might, but since the American hero was not available, Aizawa Shouta was leading the class. All the students were thinking about the freckled guy, each with different thoughts, but they all shared one common idea. Revenge on Izuku Midoriya. Suddenly, they heard chains followed by screams that Todoroki recognized, and a few thuds. Endeavor, I told you to move quickly. Aizawa, who is he fighting now? Oh right, I forgot, you'll have a new classmate. Mineta, what? Kaminari, at this point? Aizawa, don't look at me like that, it's the director's order. Shinso, what about me? Will I switch to general studies? Aizawa, no, or well, I don't know. As soon as the director arrives, I'll talk to him, alright? Endeavor's step sounded closer. Shoji used his quirk to create an ear, and Jiro used her earphone jack to connect it to the wall. Shoji, it can't be. Jiro, this has to be. Aizawa, peeking through the door what is he doing here? Nezu, calm down, Shouta, you need to relax. You weren't there when the Nomus attacked. Aizawa, I saw the call but my responsibility to my students is more significant, so. Nezu, that's why you missed everything, but it doesn't matter. 
This kid is still a UA student, so please. The kind rodent entered followed by Endeavor, All Might, and Midnight. Nezu, hello, everyone. As you may have heard from your teacher, you'll have a new classmate. It's someone you already know, and although life has been unfair to him, it hasn't stopped him from pursuing his dream. Everyone was waiting to see who it was, except for Jiro and Shoji, who seemed frightened. Kaminari, hey Kyoka, what did you hear? Jiro, he's back. A green and long mane appeared in the doorframe. Everyone was surprised, and in the case of Mina, Hagakure, and Mineta, they were scared because their former classmate, the traitor Izuku Midoriya, was standing in front of them. His appearance was deplorable, dirty and torn pants, what used to be a shirt now just tattered shreds, revealing the green-haired guy's body with no visible scars. His face, stained with dirt and blood, wasn't clearly visible due to the thick beard he now had. His eyes lost their characteristic sparkle, and his gaze shifted from hopeful to fearful, with a slightly furrowed brow. Immediately, someone stood up. Ida, with all due respect, what is that threat doing here? Nezu, didn't Izawa tell you? He's your new classmate. Uraka, he's a traitor, he attacked us this morning. Izuku only opened his eyes for a moment but then returned to his usual gaze, so Shigaraki had arrived before him. Nezu, well, in that. Bakugo, and to hell with that. That idiot should be locked up like the damn street ready is. Cursing at the wrong time didn't amuse the director. He wasn't pleased with them calling the green-haired guy that. Nezu, young Bakugo, do you have a problem with rats? The blonde realized his words, so he just grumbled in anger but didn't say anything. Although that didn't prevent almost everyone from starting to complain, except Koda, Yaoyorozu, and Todoroki. Nezu, quiet. Young ones, I remind you that as heroes, we should give second chances. Your companion, even if you don't believe it. Bakugo, Yue is a damn elite school for people with quirks. He doesn't have one, so he has no business being here. Smirking mockingly. At that moment, Deku sharpened his gaze, amused. Now he knew. Deku, thinking, Kachan, sometimes you're really helpful. Everyone supported the ash blonde, but they didn't expect the freckled one to break free from his handcuffs and then the ones on his feet. He touched the muzzle and ripped it off with a single pull. Deku, throwing away the muzzle well. That was easy. Retro technology, I suppose. Come on, I'm a villain accused of who knows how many things, and they give me this? I deserve more respect. Endeavor smiled amused, but the others were just impressed. Deku, well, well, Bakugo, you do have a big mouth. I bet everyone else thinks the same, right? Shouts and insults followed. Deku, okay, that makes it clear. What will I do? I know. I propose a bet. Aizawa, a bet? Deku, yes, a simple bet. You all know by now that I'm quirkless, right? Everyone, yes. Deku, good, that saves time. The bet is simple, you against me, an army of 20 students against a villain. If you win, I'll leave. If I win, I stay. Ida, you're crazy, we'll kill you. Deku, they tried once, and here I am. I guess either they're unlucky, or I can't die. Ida just turned away angrily. Uraka took her boyfriend's hand, and though Izuku noticed, he didn't care. Deku, so, what do you say? Izawa, there's no need for that, you simply don't have to be here. Deku, come on, it'll be fun. Besides, didn't Bakugo say this was an elite school? Are you going to tell me you're afraid of a quirkless? Are you afraid of losing, or of me? Done, the bait was thrown, now it was just a matter of. Bakugo, I'm going to kill you, you damn orphan. Done, Izuku took less time than expected. After that, everyone followed Bakugo's lead. The green-haired one smiled amused, his plan worked. Deku, well, if everyone agrees, go outside, put on your sports gear and stuff. Aizawa, you don't give orders here, kid. But if this gets you to leave, then go. Class A quickly exited, followed by Aizawa. All Might, along with Midnight, Endeavor, and Nezu, looked at the boy. Deku, Director Nezu, let Vlad King know. If possible, I'd like Class B to watch the fight too. All Might, why? Deku, so they can see who they're dealing with. Everyone was ready, standing about to start their fight. The UA uniform proudly worn, smirks adorned their faces. Finally, Deku appeared before them wearing the same outfit as when he arrived. Deku, you didn't take long. Were you that eager to get rid of me? 
Ida talked to Uraka, possibly planning to defeat him. Maybe it would work against the old Deku, but this wasn't him. Yao Yorozu elegantly stood in front of everyone with Todoroki and Bakugo. Yao Yorozu, Izuku Midoriya. You betrayed your friends, turned your back on your ideals, and for that, you were sent to Tartarus. Somehow you escaped, and now you want to come back as a student. You will be punished accordingly. Deku, hey, be more careful. That's not how you should treat a hero. Yao Yorozu, are you calling an aspiring heroine and a Yao Yorozu family member a girl? Despite being on the verge of death, you've got style. But how about this? It'll be fair, creating a sword. All Might, young Yao Yorozu, what are you doing? Yao Yorozu, I'd feel bad attacking someone quirkless and unarmed. Aizawa, don't. Deku, seriously? You're giving me a weapon? Yao Yorozu, consider it an act of respect. Deku, thanks, but no thanks. I don't want it. Yao Yorozu, do you understand what will happen if... Deku, I just don't want the fight to be over so soon. The guy smiled amusingly. Deku, and honestly, I don't like to fight, and I don't have time for this, but since. The green-haired felt his predator instinct kicking in strongly. He saw Yao Yorozu creating another sword and charging at him. Izuku could dodge it, but he wanted to see how strong everyone had become, so he let himself be cut. Deku, thinking, damn, this is sharp. They really want to kill me. The guy screamed and then fell to his knees as the raven-haired cleaned her bloodstained sword, satisfied. But soon, those screams would stop. The girl would turn and see that the freckled one would stand up without any problem. Deku, hmm, didn't like it. You left some parts short and others long. Not a good hairdresser. I'll have to fix it later. The girl saw that she had only cut some of the guy's long hair and beard. Yao Yorozu, and, no, how can you? Did you dodge all my attacks? But your blood. You should be covered in wounds. Deku, wounds? What wounds, girl? The guy turned around and raised his arms, but there were no injuries. Yao Yorozu, no. It's impossible. Bah. Bakugo said. Deku, and you believe him? You already threw the first punch, now it's my turn. The guy was about to attack when explosions interrupted him. Bakugo, damn nerd, die. True to form, Bakugo shouted and flew toward the fight. But as he approached, Izuku took a four-legged animal stance and started running towards Bakugo. Before the blonde could attack, the green-haired passed by, enraging Bakugo, who chased after his enemy. But before he could do anything, Deku stopped, propelled himself with his arms, and kicked the explosive's head. The guy immediately jumped as the tingling behind his head warned him of the threat of a powerful kick from Ida. Mineta, is that jerk winning against us? Kaminari, we're not even fighting yet. Ida, come back, you traitor. Everyone join the fight, we can beat him if we all go together. Deku, landing in front of Ida are you sure about that? The blue-haired guy delivered another kick, which was now caught by Izuku. Taking advantage of his opponent's instability, he kicked the other leg to lift and throw him to the side. Deku, come on then. If you think you can beat me, come all without fear. Ready, now Class A geared up for the fight. Up above, watching from a safe place, Class B observed this battle. Kendo, he's here. Manoma, what's that idiot doing here? Vlad King, believe it or not. He's innocent. Kendo, he can't be serious. Vlad King, I know. I know what you're thinking. Back in the fight, the entire Class A launched themselves against the green-haired, who was ready for them. Deku, breathing calmly Michiri, Mikiri. Insert ACDC's TNT. Bakugo was the first to arrive, but Izuku avoided him relatively easily. Then came Shoji, attacking brutally, but Izuku dodged him well. Deku, honestly, Shoji, you were one of the ones I liked in the class. The guy hit him hard in the shoulder joint. Shoji, does that hurt? Deku, that was a calculated blow, my friend. It may not hurt, but you won't be able to move your arm. Shoji tried, but it was true. It was useless. Although that didn't mean it was his only arm, the huge gorilla pounced with force, creating other arms that hit Izuku, who dodged some attacks. Deku, you're fast attacking, I admit, but you're big and heavy. That makes you slow to move. Izuku moved quickly, giving no chance to poor Shoji, who finally fell. But after that came an imposing glacier of ice. The predator instinct was so strong that even the freckled one felt a slight discomfort in his head. Todoroki, I'm sorry, Midoriya, but you asked for it. Deku, 
Tell me something, Todoroki, do you know how to fight? Todoroki, what's the point of the question? Deku, then I'm sorry. Taking a fighting stance, the green haired attacked his friend. It was martial arts, and even though Todoroki had a taste for traditional Japanese style, his fighting technique was not good. The two color had to use his quirk in simultaneous activation mode to fight on par with the freckled one, but Izuku quickly regained control of the fight. However, now, the freckled one was more aggressive. Every blow should be with the intention to kill. Todoroki was impressed. His friend had never shown himself like this. That look was cold, calculating. Todoroki thought he was even reading his mind, but when he closed his eyes due to a huge flame he created, it was his downfall. Deku, I told you, Todoroki, I'm sorry. A blow to the back of the head, and Shoto Todoroki fell to the ground unconscious. Izuku was also wearing out. The fights against Shoji and Todoroki were exciting, but he still didn't fully master the Michiri, Mikiri. If he wanted to win, he had to do it now. He couldn't think much, a blow distracted him. The cause was Sato, who, after consuming a lot of sugar, was now stronger than before. Sato, Sato crushes broccoli. Traitor broccoli. Deku, you know the irony when you want to beat me and talk about yourself in the third person? Sato, broccoli offends Sato, Sato crushes. The guy threw himself at Izuku, who dodged all the attacks. Sato was easier than the others, strong, yes, but also stupid, and Deku would use that to his advantage. Jiro, Kaminari, what are you doing? Kaminari, wait, it's not ready yet. Jiro, what? Kaminari, my special attack. Izuku was already panting a bit, he had to finish Sato now. Jiro, Kaminari. Kaminari, ready, I just need him to get closer, and I'll fry him like a cushy itch. That's what Jiro needed to hear. With her jacks, she attacked the green-haired, who dodged her but also hampered him to avoid Sato, who hit the guy. Deku, good, Jiro, now you have my attention. The green-haired headed towards the purple-haired, being pursued by Sato. But quickly, his predator instinct alerted him to Kaminari, but then he had an idea. The guy turned around and attacked Sato. Kaminari, he's ignoring us. Jiro, what do you want me to do, genius? Kaminari, bring him here. I only have one shot. Deku, only one? Honestly, I feel cheated. Both turned around upon hearing the voice of the green-haired guy nearby. He was running towards them, being chased by Sato. Sato, broccoli making fun of Sato. Jiro, Kaminari, now. Kaminari, yes. Electro. Ball. The blonde generated a sphere of lightning that sparked and even affected Jiro as she was closest to him. But when he was about to throw it, the green-haired guy was already too close. Kaminari tried to move away but couldn't. However, just before Izuku collided with him, he moved away. Kaminari saw how Sato was now running towards him. Jiro, don't let a man do a woman's job. Heartbreak fuzz. The girl threw her jacks at Deku, but he skillfully caught them and threw them towards Kaminari, who was just recovering from Sato's impact. Both were affected by the blonde's attack, but Jiro also received the shock in her jacks, leaving her stunned. That part filled with smoke until Izuku saw a figure emerge. Sato, Sato. Sleep now. The guy fell face first, Kaminari was in his idiot mode, and Jiro was on the ground, clutching her ears. Deku, I told you it wasn't my intention. The green hair dodged another kick from Ida and a slap from Uraka. Ida, you'll pay with your miserable life. Uraka, I can't believe I ever loved you. Deku, and I can't believe you never had the guts to tell me. The guy didn't hold back in this attack, he took a fighting stance and. Deku, Rinke Ogi, Kyoga Ryu Satsu Ken. Kendo, hearing this, was surprised. The girl paid attention to the green haired's movements. The attack was brutal neither of them could defend themselves. They could only endure the beating. Kendo, boo. But how? Tetsu Tetsu, what's wrong, carrot? Kendo, this attack is a combination of two fighting styles, it takes two people to achieve it. Ibura, what? Yui, but you just saw it with only one person. Tetsu Tetsu, that's true, it must be just a myth about needing two people. Kendo, no, my father told me about that technique when he lived elsewhere he said only two brothers could do it. There's only been one person who managed to mix it. Yui, who? Kendo, they called him the monster guru. The hero hunter. The nickname alone sent shivers down everyone's spine, reminding them of the hero killer stain. Back in the fight, 
everything was in favor of the freckled one, he had already defeated several of his classmates. Yao Yorozu, Round 2. Deku, whenever you're ready. The green haired approached Yao Yorozu, but before he reached her, his predator instinct alerted him. Behind him, Bakugo was approaching at full speed, propelled by his explosions. The guy managed to turn around, ready to protect the raven haired from the attack and stop Bakugo. However, the opportunity for Yaoyorozu to win the encounter was too tempting. She didn't hold back and thrust the sword at the same time Bakugo unleashed his explosion. Deku used his pyrokinesis to prevent the explosion from touching him and minimize the damage. Still, the shockwave caused him to be thrown backward, and he impaled his back on the sword. The guy felt the worst pain while Yaoyorozu released the sword and covered her mouth in horror at what she had done. Nezu, young Midoriya. Endeavor, curse it. Preparing his flames. Yaoyorozu, no. I. I didn't want this, Midoriya. I. Deku, la. Leave here. The boy used his black whips without anyone noticing and struck the raven-haired girl in the torso with enough force to throw her away, even though it meant hurting her. Since he was far away, the boy stood up as the smoke cleared. Bakugo approached triumphantly. The green-haired one just shook his hands, wiping off the blood, and pulled out the sword in pain. Bakugo, I win, again. I always win. Deku, is that so? Frightened, everyone watched as the dust cleared, revealing Deku standing. Yaoyorozu, boo. But I. Deku, can you keep fighting? Bakugo, your hands. Deku, now you see them, and now. Closer. The green-haired one approached at great speed and began to hit him with the guardian dog technique. The blonde had to use an explosion to push him away. The boy was about to attack the blonde again when he felt a strong blow followed by another from a different direction. Deku, Suyu and Hagakure, it seems strange that you weren't doing anything. Hagakure, don't talk to us, villain. Suyu, only my friends call me Tsuyu, traitor. Deku, well, what should I call you now? Frog spider? The green-haired one threw her tongue, which Deku caught with an arm. The boy wrapped his arm a little more, pulling the girl closer, but his other arm was caught by Saro's tape. So, the boy was trapped on both sides. His captors made the freckled one extend his arms, allowing Ida, Kirishima, Uraka, Mineta, Tokoyami, Aoyama, and the others to hit him. However, tired of the rest, the freckled one started moving back and forth, exerting force. Kirishima, what's happening to him? Bakugo, he's gone crazy. Let's finish him, explosion head. Kirishima, yes. The kids were about to jump, but they stopped seeing how Deku crossed both arms forcefully, causing both the dark-haired one and the frog to be thrown towards him. The boy landed on Saro's stomach, knocking the air out of him, took Tsuyu by the neck, slammed her to the ground, and kicked her away. With his predator sense, he sensed Hagakure's presence, surprising her with a strong knee to the stomach that knocked her out. Tokoyami released Dark Shadow, but Deku dodged it and reached the boy. Deku, relying on your quirk doesn't do you any good. A hammer blow was enough to knock the dark-haired boy out of the fight. Aoyama tried to attack, but Izuku used Sero's tape to pull him and knock the effeminate blonde out. Mineta tried to attack Izuku, thinking that if he could knock out the green-haired one, the women would see how incredible he was. Needless to say, apart from being stupid, his plan failed spectacularly. The green-haired one used the combination he used against Ida and Uraka, this time more aggressively, causing the dwarf to fly. He focused more on him, as blood dripped from his fists. However, Izuku was breathing with difficulty because not fully mastering Makiri was a strain on his body. The green-haired one wouldn't last long, then a blow brought him back to reality, Class A fighter Mashirao Ojiro. The green-haired one then smiled. Deku, just the person I wanted to see. Ojiro, I see you have a fighting technique. That's interesting. It's a pity you're the bad guy. Deku, it's a pity you're my opponent. The green-haired one stopped using Makiri and took a fighting stance, one knee bent, the other at an angle, one hand raised like a claw, and the other at an angle. Ojiro, let it be an honorable match. The blonde took a similar fighting stance, and both engaged. Blows were exchanged, and the blonde admitted that his opponent was good. He didn't expect such good hits, although he fought properly too. The advantage was in using his tail, trying to catch Izuku off guard, but he never succeeded. The blows wouldn't stop in this match for either of them. In a desperate move, Ojiro grabbed Izuku by the neck and tried to throw him backward, but Izuku was faster. He landed on his feet and threw himself at Ojiro, 
grabbing him by the shoulders, preventing him from moving, and performed a suplex. Deku, you're good, Ojiro. You're the only one who gave me a good fight, and I respect that. Deku turned around only to see Shinso in front of him. The purple-haired one, feeling exposed, raised his hands. Shinso, smiling hello, Midoriya. I'm glad you came. How have you been? Deku didn't answer. Shinso, it's silly to ask, right? Hey, I give up, seriously. You just fought the whole class, and you don't even look tired. I don't have a fighting technique like everyone else. What do you say we leave it at that? Friends? The purple-haired one extended his hand with a smile that the green-haired one reciprocated. The boy also shook hands with the purple-haired one. Shinso just smiled maliciously. Shinso, I got you. Deku, are you sure? Shinso tried to twist the boy's arm, but Deku pulled him down, ready to hit Aizawa's protege in the face with his knee. However, the boy managed to free himself and used his hands to cover, avoiding the blow. Shinso, don't you trust me? The green-haired one didn't say anything. He just kicked, and the boy dodged it and landed a punch to the face, but the green-haired one managed to dodge and hit him with both hands on the chin. Deku, I only trust one person, and you're seeing them. The annoyed purple-haired one kicked low, knocking down the green-haired one. The boy tried to hit him with his elbow, but Deku dodged it. Shinso saw one of the swords that Yaoirozu created and tried to attack the boy, but Deku managed to hold the blade with both hands. Deku, one of these injured me. Shinso, and with this, you'll go. The purple-haired one made more effort, cutting the boy's hand, but the green-haired one pulled the sword and, hitting it with his elbow, managed to break it. He took the broken blade with his hands and quickly tried to attack Shinso, who covered himself. A kick to the head was what he received. Deku, consider it an answer. The green-haired one walked a little more relaxed, but an explosion threw him away. The boy was tired, he just looked up to see Baku go. Deku, for some reason, I always forget about you. The furious blonde attacked, using his explosions, and delivered a double kick in the air that Deku couldn't dodge. His strength was almost depleted, but Izuku decided he would use his head more than his fists in this fight. Even so, his suspicion might be confirmed. Deku, an explosion kick? It's good, but to be a fighter, you have to be more than explosions. Distracting the blonde, Deku approached at full speed, stomped forcefully, and kicked the blonde's ribs. He quickly stood up and threw himself again. He grabbed Deku by the neck, dragging him while propelling himself with one hand. In the interlude between explosions, he hit his rival in the face. Bakugo, who needs to be a fighter in a world of quirks. You're just a hindrance I'll take care of permanently today. Deku, of course, as you say. And that's why I'm holding back? At that moment, Bakugo opened his eyes, confused, which Deku took advantage of to bury his whips in the ground, stopping. Bakugo let go of the green-haired one and continued his way. He stopped, but when he turned around, he saw how Deku hit him brutally in the face. Deku, double move. Guardian dog, crossed fang. Coordination secret technique, fang crossing dragon killing fist. Bakugo would regret getting distracted now, the beating was brutal, each blow made him feel intense pain. Deku, and I thought you'd be a challenge. Bakugo, shut up. Hypernova. Deku, say it, damn it. Bakugo, smash. An explosion hit Deku, it was so massive that the boy went flying, hitting a wall. Deku, that was indeed a huge explosion. I was quite surprised, to be honest. But what surprised me more was that you said smash. Tell me something, Bakugo, do you have my quirk? Bakugo smiled with mocking triumph. Bakugo, so what if I do, damn it. With this power, I'll finally defeat you and become the number one hero as it should have always been. Deku, yes. Honestly, I lied to you. From the moment I arrived, I knew you had it. It wasn't that difficult, honestly. You're an open explosive book. I just had to provoke you, and you said it yourself. The blonde approached at full speed, ready to silence the freckled one, but he gracefully avoided him. Kendo, wait. Did they take away Midoriya's quirk? Vlad King, I had no knowledge of that. Thinking, does that kid hate All Might so much that he would reveal his secret? Yaoyorozu, th. That's why Bakugo had such incredible explosive strength. Shinso, he. He stole the quirk? Todoroki, and Midoriya is the bad guy. Deku, no one knew they took away my quirk. I don't know why keep it a secret, but oh well. And as soon as I arrived, you were the first to call me quirkless. Besides, Mirio received it, not you, 
so he would be here dodging admit it, you were so weak that you had to take my quirk to become strong. You had to take someone else's power to feel secure about yourself. Bakugo approached with his explosions, trying to hit the boy without success, frustrating him more and making him attack without thinking. But All Might noticed something, something wrong. All Might, young Bakugo, stop. Bakugo, I'll finish the fight, All Might, stay out of it. All Might, no, he won. Stop now. Deku, I won? That's easy, I didn't even try. Lie. The green-haired one was exhausted, the use of Makiri was still affecting him. Also, the blood loss made his vision blurry. He didn't have much strength left, but enough to finish the fight. Bakugo, I'll kill you. Deku, you couldn't before, and you won't now. Besides, All Might said I won. You didn't even scratch me, and you claim to be better than me. If you only need my power to kick up dust, then you won't be able to. Bakugo used 100% of one for all in him and rushed at full speed, prepared his fist, and... Bakugo, killer. Smash. The hit landed in Deku's stomach, throwing him far away. The boy stuck to the wall, leaving a big hole. Bakugo, smirking sadistically that wasn't so hard. I don't get why the hell you kept breaking your bones. I just had to copy your stupid full cowl. Deku, well, that was a good hit, but... It wasn't enough to defeat me. The blonde turned towards Deku, who now stood up effortlessly. The explosive one was stunned. A punch from All Might had caused rain before, so why didn't the green-haired guy die? Deku, what's up, Bakugo? You look... scared. Bakugo, no. I should've. I should've. Deku, let me guess, you should've killed me. That's not very heroic, is it? Whispering once again. Makiri. One for all. 100%. The green-haired used one for all in his legs discreetly and lunged at Bakugo, who didn't expect that. The blonde was afraid, and then... Clap. Deku clapped in front of his rival, a simple applause to his face, and Bakugo Katsuki stood there, expressionless, his explosions extinguished. Deku, good night, old friend. The green-haired deactivated one for all along with Makiri, hit Bakugo in the stomach with his elbow, and then extended his arm, hitting him in the jaw, knocking him down and winning the match. One person defeated twenty. Deku, I win. Class A. Class B watched attentively, how is that possible? How did a quirkless person defeat an entire class? Izuku just lifted his head while smiling. He was about to take a step, but he stumbled. Makiri and blood loss were the reasons, so he took the sword Momo created, the one she stabbed him with, and used it as a cane. Deku, that's why I don't like to fight, because I know I'm going to win. 